Greetings all again to God's people, uh, either present or scattered at various places around the world. Here we are meeting on the seventh day of the week, not the first day, not Sunday, but Saturday, which is the Sabbath day, the day which at the recreation of the earth, the creator of this, the heavens and the earth, none other than Jesus Christ, as Paul tells us, in Ephesians, the third chapter. Yes, God created all things through Jesus Christ, even the seventh day of the week, beginning at sunset, on the seventh, or at the end of the sixth day, the beginning of the seventh day. And that day, Jesus Christ, as he was then the word of God, blessed the Sabbath day, sanctified it, and it was made holy. And we have that in the fourth commandment. But many today are discarding the Sabbath day. Many reject it. They say, well, it was all changed by Jesus Christ. Really? Is that what Jesus said? That he came to do away with the law? When in fact he said, even if the heavens and the earth passed and no longer exist, if they were to suddenly disintegrate. Only then would the Sabbath perhaps come to an end. But they haven't come to an end, so the Sabbath is here. Let's have a look at this, and let's start in Matthew, the 16th chapter, and we'll begin reading in verse 13. Because Jesus was interested in knowing from his disciples what people were saying about him. Verse 13, Matthew 16. Now, after coming into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus questioned his disciples, saying, Who do men declare me, the Son of Man, to be? Question. They answered, and some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So they, they didn't have any idea that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that Jesus Christ was the one responsible under the authority of his Father for the entire creation. So he said to them, but who do you declare me to be? Question to his disciples, who were later to become his apostles. Then Peter, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. At last, it was somebody who knew and declared who Jesus of Nazareth, flesh and blood, human, man, who he was. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered him and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Isn't that interesting? It was God the Father that revealed, made it known to Peter who Jesus was. My Father who is in heaven. And I say also to you that you are Peter, but upon this rock, and here he's referring to himself when he talks about the rock, not Peter, upon this rock, myself, Jesus, I will build my church, and the gates of the grave will not prevail against it. Now, since that day, has the church that Jesus said he would build continued? Has it ceased to exist? What was the name of that church? Well, the Bible tells us that the Bible only gives us one name. And it's mentioned about 12 times in the New Testament. It's called the Church of God. Now, the Church of God in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, was the full house of Israel. They were the Church of God in the wilderness. And they had the instruction, they had the command to keep the Sabbath day and have it holy, as the scriptures tell us. 
So there okay. very important. But upon this rock, Jesus said to repeat, I will build my church called the church of God. Collectively, they call the churches of Jesus Christ because the father by whom the church is named was using Jesus to administer the church and to shepherd the church and all the people. Now, if a church calls itself that there, we are the church of God, we're the church of Christ, and uh, we do not keep the Sabbath day. We have changed it to the first day of the week because that's fitting. And this is the theological thinking. You know, these great minds, these wise theologians who go on the basis that, well, what is theology? Theology is this. Theology is faith seeking understanding. Nothing could be further from the truth. What they miss entirely the Main Street Christianity that keep the first day of the week, which today is called Sunday, is about as far away from the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week, which commonly called Saturday today is. It's at the beginning of the week. The Sabbath is at the end of the week. If they are not keeping the Sabbath, question, can they be a part of the church of God? The Bible gives the answer to that, and it says categorically, no, they can't be. They are, in fact, in disobedience to the laws and commandments of God, which will never pass away. As Jesus said, though heaven and earth pass, not one job, one tittle will be passing from the law that he, in fact, delivered to ancient Israel. Now, we know that the law was magnified, and we know that there were some fulfillments where we have the physical type in the Old Testament. Now, we're raised to a spiritual level. For example, the sacrifices. All the sacrifices in the Old Testament regarding the sin offerings, the trespass offerings, and so forth, all were representations of Christ. The high priest was Christ himself. The one who made the offering of the lamb or of the animal or bird to be sacrificed represented Jesus Christ. The sacrifice that was offered to be killed and have the blood drained from it represented Jesus Christ. So that whole sacrificial now the reality, of, the reality of it was made plain when Jesus came and fulfilled all that in the flesh. He became the living sacrifice. And you can read about that in Revelations 13, 8, which was determined from the beginning of the, or the foundation of the earth. Let's have a look back at a chapter or two, Matthew, the 12th chapter, and let's see what has to be said there regarding the Sabbath day. Very important indeed. We need to understand this because, again, mainstream Christianity have rejected this and thrown it into the dustbin, the very Sabbath day of God, that Jesus Christ, the Creator, on that day blessed it sanctified it, and made it holy for the benefit of mankind. So let's see Matthew, the 12th chapter. Now, at that time, verse 1, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath day. Oh, so the Sabbath day is still in force. It's being mentioned here in the New Testament. They went through the grain shells on the Sabbath day, and his disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck the heads of grain and to eat them, probably quite uh, young and soft and easy to be eaten. But after seeing this, the Pharisees, you know, the religious people of the day, 
and we can liken uh, many of the people claiming to be Christian and Christian leaders today, uh, they are the Pharisees of today, particularly when they have replaced and changed the day that Jesus Christ gave us. In fact, he goes on to say, Behold, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Well, who said that? Does the Old Testament say that? No. Again, lawful was one of their physical burdens that they placed on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was a day for rejoicing, for resting, for worshipping God. But here they are with their nitpicking, just trying to get any way they could at Jesus and his disciples. And so he responds to them by saying, have you not read what David did when he himself and those with him were hungry? How he went into the house of God and he ate loaves of showbread, which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but for the priests only? Well, have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? Hmm, interesting. But I say to you, there is one here who is greater than the temple, referring to himself. Uh, I'm sure they missed this point. Now, if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless, referring at this point to his disciples. For and we need to take this well. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Christ is Lord of the Sabbath day. He is the one who created it in that sense. On the, very se on the seventh day of the first week of the recreation, he rested, blessed it, sanctified, and it became holy. It was holy time, which reminds us of Moses when he approached the burning bush and wondered what's going on here. So he approached the burning bush, and then he looked at it, and God spoke to him. And God here again was the Lord Jesus Christ, but he was the God of the Old Testament that they knew and understand. The Father had not been revealed at this point in time. In fact, only just a few indications. But when you go right back, uh, you know, in the early chapters of Genesis, it talks about Elohim, Jehovah. And what that means is that Jehovah of Elohim, possessive, meaning God is more than one. That's why it says in the first chapter of Genesis, let us make man. Now, we understand that, but most people don't. The us referred to the one that we know today as God the Father, who Jesus said men did not know until he came to reveal him. And the other was Jesus Christ, the one who created or recreated the heavens and the earth for, for the presence of man. And after he had created those things on the earth, and saw that everything he created was exceedingly good. So, by resting and blessing the Sabbath day, it it's read that the Sabbath was also exceedingly good. It gives man time to rest from the labor of the six days of the week. It gives him time to reflect on the creation on the Creator, and on His Word. And for Adam and Eve, who were created on the sixth day, they were there with Christ as He taught them as the God of the Old Testament, giving them His laws and commandments, which are all pictured in that second, first, second, and third chapter. Uh, amazing chapters. Genesis. 
the book of beginnings. Whenever we go to establish a doctrine, we go back to the book of Genesis to see what the foundations are. What is the what are the foundings, founding principles that God the Father and Christ have built on since then? So let's go back there and see that in Genesis, the second chapter, and the first four verses. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And by the beginning of the seventh day, beginning, this is coming down to sunset, God finished his work. So he finished his work by the end of the sixth day, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And as it says at the end of chapter 2, everything he made was exceedingly good, and no difference for the Sabbath day. So the Sabbath day is exceedingly good. And what happens if we don't keep it? Well, a lot of things. We know that the Sabbath day in Exodus, the 20th chapter, in verse 8, where the command for keeping the Sabbath day is there. And what's the command? It begins with the word remember. In other words, don't forget. Remember. Yes. Let's repeat that. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. As we were about to say with Moses, when he came to the burning bush, the voice of the Lord said to him, Moses, take off your sandals. You're standing on holy ground. So God's presence is in the Sabbath day. So the question remains, are we going to observe the Sabbath of God or are we going to pollute it as Israel did? And God gave it to them. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. This is a command. It's the law of God, but it's also a command. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Well, I guess if the Lord is not your God, then you're not going to remember the Sabbath day. Interesting. In it you shall not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter, your manservant nor your manservant, nor your livestock nor the stranger within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and sanctified it. So again, any action that God says that we should not be involved in on the Sabbath day, like work, is not keeping the Sabbath. It is actually polluting the Sabbath day, which is holy, especially paid holy for you and for me and for the rest of mankind. Let's take it a little further. Let's go and see a very important point which the churches of this world, the mainstream Christian religions have rejected, and because they have rejected this, they have rejected the God of the Bible. They have rejected the Creator, who was the one that became Jesus Christ by changing the seventh-day Sabbath, which has been blessed, sanctified, and hallowed, and change the day to the first day of the week, the day of the sun, where the sun god is worshipped. And the sun god is not the son of man. It is not the son of God. It's the day of devil worship. It's the day of worshipping Satan. Okay. Exodus and the 31st chapter. This is a very powerful text. Very powerful scripture. And it's all to do with the Sabbath day. Verse 12, Exodus 31. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Truly you shall keep what? Sunday? No. My Sabbath, plural. You see, because we know there's no more than just the weekly Sabbath. According to Leviticus 23, there are also the annual Sabbaths. And these are not 
the holy days or the feast days kept by mainstream Christianity today. They're not being kept by mainstream Christianity today, therefore, because they're not keeping the Sabbath day and God's holy days, they do not know who God is. The God they're worshipping is not God the Father, it is not Jesus Christ, but another Jesus who represents a totally different faith, which will end up in the result of death to all those who do not turn from it and who repent. And that doesn't matter who those people are. They may be kings, they may be presidents, they may be prime ministers, they may be the rich and powerful, the wealthy. But unless they turn and understand about the Sabbath day, their days are limited. They will have a chance to repent, and their eternal life depends on the choices they make. So speak to the children of Israel, verse 13, saying, Truly you shall, you shall keep my Sabbath, for it, that is the keeping of the Sabbath, not just, oh, yeah, the seventh day is the Sabbath day. No, not good enough. It is in the keeping, the observance of the seventh day, the Sabbath day, which has been blessed and hallowed. It is a sign. And we need to mark this well. It is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. Why? The next statement is critical. To know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Can Sunday do that? When God said it's the Sabbath? Well, the argument the theologians and those preachers and ministers, hierarchy, hierarchy in the churches, their argument is with the scriptures. Therefore, their argument is with Jesus Christ and God the Father, not the churches that observe and keep the Sabbath day. I want to pause on that. It is a sign between me and you. It's a sign. Throughout all your generations, to know that, what is it? To know what? That I am the Lord who sanctifies you. In other words, if you want to know the true God, it begins through his Sabbath day. You will never find out who the true God is by keeping the first day or any other day of the week. Simply does not reveal the Creator. It do does not reveal who Jesus Christ is. The Sabbath day does, because remember what he said, he is the Lord of the Sabbath from creation, and that has never changed, never will. You can go online and you can see in our own literature literature and publications how the Catholic Church shows that they claim to be the ones that changed Saturday, Sabbath, the seventh day to the first day. And if you want to follow the Bible, then the seventh day of the week is the Sabbath of the Bible. But the Church has the authority to change what God has said, does it? What do you think? Is that not an abomination? Is that not putting your finger on the nose or, you know, telling God, you know, get out of our business, God? Well, sorry, God is not going to get out of our business. God is going to bring retribution on all those who reject his Sabbath day. And we can see, perhaps we can look at that again a little later, another time, about what happened to the nation of ancient Israel when their leadership, when their kings and their prophets and their priests violated the Sabbaths, you know, as goes the king, as goes the president, prime ministers, priests, popes, as goes with them, 
so goes with the people. Whenever the royalty, whenever the kings of Israel, whenever the priests violated God's laws that affected the whole nation and brought the punishment of God upon them for breaking his laws, because what God wanted for them was to bless them. God wanted to show them his way. But when you put your nose up against God, you're exalting yourself above God. And God has a lot to say, say about that. But in the keeping of the Sabbath day. Now let's expand that to Leviticus 23, when we'll keep all of God's Sabbath, all his holy days, but particularly the Sabbath day and the Passover. Absolute minimum requirement for knowing who God is, who Christ is, and the path to eternal life. It's the beginning. But there's much more to the story. So again, that whole scripture in Exodus, the 31st chapter. Verse 14, let's continue with this. But let's not forget verse 13, where it says, It is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, throughout your whole lifetime and the lifetime of your children and into the future to know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So, the Sabbath day and the keeping of it identify who God is, that you may know that I am the Lord. But what does God see in you and in me in keeping the Sabbath? The question, does not God see those who are his people? Are they not the sign that identifies us if we are keeping his Sabbath to him so that he knows who we are? Well, there's more to the story, and we'll pick that up another time. But the blessing that God has given to us on the seventh day of the week where we can come together as his people, where we can worship him, we can rejoice for before him, we can have fellowship with one another, and we can talk about his word, and we can sing praises to him, and we can honor him. We can glorify him, and we can show our love toward him and to the brethren. That, indeed, is a privilege. It's a privilege that God has given to those who know him and the fact that he knows us. So God wants us to rejoice in the Sabbath as we keep it with our families, friends, and our brothers and sisters who are part of the fellowship.